G'day from the Japanese Grand Prix. So is this the best and cheapest race in the world? Well, I'll tell you what, it's got a lot going for it and I'll answer that question in just a moment. Straight up, this is one of the greatest tracks you will ever see for racing. The drivers love it, the fans love it. It provides some outstanding racing. And get this, a three day ticket here is 108 US dollars. 108. What are they asking in Vegas? 600, plus plus. And here in Japan, you actually get some sort of seating. Now, it's not grandstand seating, but it's certainly a lot more comfortable and standing the whole day. I think what people love about this race is the passion that the fans show, and we've seen plenty of it on display today out in the pit walk. And the thing here is the fans are so darn polite, you don't have to have big fences up. Everybody just does the right thing. If you're coming here for a high-end corporate sort of thing, it's, it's not a Vegas, it's not Abu Dhabi. And the stand at Turn 1 is yeah, certainly getting on a bit, but this year they've added a whole lot more stands because the place sells out. People come here for the racing. Just about every driver has a fan club in this country. If um, you have a look here, these flags are all devoted to Fernando Alonso. I actually thought it was a circuit thing, but no, it's just a fan group. Another thing that stands this race out as being amazing for fans is the fact that there are some areas where amateur photographers can bring in their long lenses and shoot from the stands. Now, I'm not sure if that happens at any other track. I actually went for a drive around the track late this afternoon in a car, and it is a beautiful track to drive. What it must be like at those crazy speeds is anybody's guess, but certainly the drivers adore it. So answering my own question, is it the cheapest and the best? I think it's certainly the cheapest, certainly the best value, maybe not the very best race, but I tell you what, it's a real thrill to be in the company of these people here this weekend. Uh, other things you might be interested in today, the Ferris wheel, first time I've seen the driver's faces and numbers on a number of the carriages. I was intrigued by these new Red Bull hats. And I asked somebody what the Japanese characters say, and it does say Red Bull Racing. Uh, we saw Esteban Ocon out on the grid today racing remote control cars with Oscar Piastri. Now, last year, you might remember, Esteban did exactly the same with Lewis Hamilton. And it turns out that Esteban, Lewis and Oscar all got their starts with remote control cars back in their early days. In fact, Oscar Piastri, you might have seen my video, actually won a championship or two going back to his very early years. So it was great to see Esteban out there having some fun with Oscar this year. Who's he going to pick next year? Oh, one quirky story that I'll tell you, and I won't say which team, but uh, I was walking past it and I stopped and had a listen. I think, what is that song? They were playing Enola Gay. Now, I have no doubt there was nothing in it. It was just that it was quite quirky to hear that song here in Japan. So we go on to Lance Stroll. I don't often get great responses from Lance pitches, but this one did well this morning. Uh, I got definite John Travolta vibes seeing him today. The hair swept back and looking pretty cool in that boss outfit. He and uh, Fernando Alonso both came in dressed in boss because they are a team sponsor. And that Lance Stroll pitcher was my biggest performer today until Oscar Piastri rolled up with Lily's Nymer. Lily has actually nearly finished her degree in I think it's aeronautical engineering. I thought she was gonna finish last year, but she tells me today that she's due to graduate sometime in summer. Maybe she'll end up getting a gig here in the F1 paddock. Lando was in a hoodie, his own hoodie, and if you have a look closely, it's got a whole lot of logos on there, um, but you probably don't recognize most of them because they are stylized logos of his fans. Except a couple, like PAP is uh, John Malvin's company, John's his trainer. But yeah, that was a nice hoodie that's available on his website right now. Pierre Gasly, he's obviously selling a hoodie too because he had a Gasly hoodie on. Joe Guan Yu's selling a shirt because he had a Joe shirt and also the cap has his logo on the front there. George Russell was decked out in Tommy Hilfiger and I thought he was pretty bold because it was chilly this morning. That wind was ripping down this paddock and uh, he only had a short walk, I guess, so he just forged on for the sake of fashion. This is the era between the catering and the hospitality suites. And a lot of the drivers will take this route to get away from the photographers and video cameramen that are out in the paddock. But oftentimes you'll see drivers hanging around and um, talking because it's semi-secret, semi-private. Next week I'll be doing a driver's drove video and I can tell you now that Valtteri Bottas rode a bicycle in as he often uh, does. I went for a wander down pit lane today and have a look at the signage above each garage. This is, and I'm pretty confident in saying this, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is the biggest signage we see all year. 
All nine of these are vinyl stickers, and the last one, Haas, is actually a digital sign. Now, the thing that's unique about this paddock is that the last team is right underneath the podium. What that means is Red Bull, typically, would be the closest to the podium, but they're going to have the longest walk for their crew to race up and uh, celebrate Max's win, if indeed he wins, which the bookmakers say he will win this weekend. Yuki Tsunoda is big here, it's his home race, and in fact if you go over to the other side of the track in the main grandstand area, behind you'll see some monstrous great pictures of the young Japanese driver. Oh, and I only forgot, his is one of three of those little hutches that were built last year by Sebastian Vettel. You might remember this. At turn one, all of the drivers, well, all but one, I think it was Kevin Magnussen that didn't make it down there, went down last year and uh, they built or decorated these little wooden homes for insects and critters. And initially I thought they would have all disappeared, but no, there are three that are still there, although we don't have the different colour curbing that we had last year uh, around Turn 1. Now, did I mention the biscuits, the Tim Tams? Because uh, Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll were the recipients of some Tim Tams in custom packaging, which uh, was very nice. And I don't know whether there was a lot made. I certainly don't think that they were actually um, offered for sale. But there's an idiot in the background there. He ruined my last video, and he's going to have a crack again. <laughs> Hi, fans. <laughs> Oh, you can't, he can't resist. Uh, he's a photographer. Quite a well-known and good one. This morning I was hopeful of getting a clean shot of Daniel Ricciardo coming in, but unfortunately he was performing for his photographer, Peter Fox, and uh, as such, I dipped out. Uh, but I could just get some nice shots of them saying hi to each other. Now, for those of you wondering where and how we work at Formula One, this is the media centre in the paddock in the heart of Suzuka and it's probably one of the best media centres we have because well if I want to go out and get a shot of a driver I go through these doors I walk out here and bang else will be overexposed but that's the heart of the paddock how does this compare to other media centres well I'll give you the worst example Saudi Arabia the walk from the media centre to the paddock there is every bit of 300 meters so if you forget something in the paddock you've got a long walk back to pick it up and get back there Here's another thing I picked up today for the first time, these um, shirts from the McLaren crew, and I'm sure a lot of other teams have a little secret pocket in there so that it's very easy to put your media pass, or not, they don't have a media pass, they have a team pass, inside there so it doesn't get in the way. Now you might have heard me talk about this race before and say that it is one of the best, and certainly the track is amazing, the people are amazing, uh, they greet you with such warmth, even if we don't speak their language and they don't speak ours. There's this lovely camaraderie and the town itself is interesting. It's, um, it's a small city or a big town, quite rural in some parts and this is what the drive to the track looks like. Well worth a visit and if you're a pure enthusiast of motorsport, I tell you what, you wouldn't get too many better places than right here. Now with that said, I'm going to go and uh, pack my stuff up and go and have a Wagyu steak. If you've enjoyed this video, now's your time to like it. Subscribe if you haven't done so, and something like 50% of you have not subscribed, so I'll be grateful if some of you would hit that subscribe button. And for all my other content, have a look here. Thanks for watching, and stay passionate. This morning I was hopeful of getting a clean picture. <laughs>